listening to the wonderful world kids podcast today's episode is the second part of our three part ocean series and today we are talking about the layers of the ocean and what lies at its bottom so is the bottom of the ocean flat or does it have caves and volcanoes how do trenches form and what are the five layers of the ocean Let's find out in today's episode. Hi everyone and welcome to the wonderful World Kids podcast. Today we will explore the ocean's layers and talk about what lies at its bottom. Based on the temperature, pressure, and the amount of sunlight that penetrates the water, the ocean can be divided into five layers. The top layer of the ocean is called the epipelagic zone. It extends from the surface down to 200 meters. This layer gets the maximum amount of sunlight and so it is also called the sunlight zone. It is the warmest of all the ocean layers. Wind keeps this layer mixed and thus allows the sun's heat to be distributed vertically all through the sunlight zone. This top ocean layer is teeming with life. The sunlight reaching this zone is used by plants and algae to make food, which supports a wide variety of animals such as fish, squid, sea turtles, corals and whales. Below the sunlight zone is the twilight zone, also known as the mesopelagic zone. It extends from 200 meters down to 1000 meters. The twilight zone contains a region known as the thermocline. In a thermocline, water temperature decreases rapidly with increasing depth. It is the transition layer between the warm turbulent water at the surface and the cooler calm water deep below very little sunlight reaches the twilight zone and this sunlight is too weak to support photosynthesis so no plants grow here and the animals here must rely on other sources of food such as dead animals that fall from the upper layers some recent studies suggest that the twilight zone contains more fish than the rest of the ocean combined krill and bristle mouth are some of the fish found in this layer and here is a fun fact the bristle mouth are the most abundant vertebrates on earth for every human on earth there are more than 100,000 bristle mouths because of the lack of light bioluminescence begins to appear in organisms in this zone Bioluminescence is the ability of living organisms to create their own light through a chemical reaction. Lanternfish, which is a common fish found in the twilight zone, is an example of a bioluminescent organism. Lanternfish has spots on its body that glow in the dark. These spots are called photophores. The next ocean layer is called the basopelagic zone or the midnight zone. This layer extends from 1000 meters down to 4000 meters. The temperature in the midnight zone is relatively constant at around 4 degrees Celsius or 39 degrees Fahrenheit. It is called the midnight zone due to its constant darkness. The only light at this depth and lower comes from the bioluminescence of the animals themselves. Despite the harsh conditions in the midnight zone, many animals live here. Some of the most common animals include anglerfish, which has a bioluminescent lure on its head, vampire squid, which has long feathery arms and a pair of bioluminescent fins, and gulper eel. The fourth layer is the abyssal zone, 
also known as the abyssopelagic zone. It extends from 4,000 meters down to 6,000 meters. The sunlight doesn't penetrate to these depths, so the waters here are extremely dark, and the temperature is near freezing at around two to three degrees Celsius, which is around thirty-five to thirty-seven degrees Fahrenheit. The abyssal zone is a dark, cold, and high-pressure environment. But despite these harsh conditions. The abyssal zone is home to a diverse array of organisms. These organisms have adapted to the extreme environment in a variety of ways. Some have bioluminescence, which allows them to produce their own light. Some have large sensitive eyes that help them to see in the darkness, and some have flexible bodies that enable them to withstand. High pressure. In the abyssal zone, food is scarce, so these organisms have evolved to be very efficient at using energy. They often have long, thin bodies that minimize surface area, which helps them conserve heat. They also have a slow metabolism, which allows them to survive on a limited amount of food. Some of the animals that can be found in this zone are bristle worms, sea cucumbers, and giant tube worms. And beyond the abyssal zone lies the last layer of the ocean, the forbidden realm of trenches. This zone is known as the Hadal zone, and it extends from six thousand meters down to the bottom of the deepest parts of the ocean. This zone. Is named after Hades, the Greek god of the underworld. This zone occurs only in trenches. A trench is a long, deep depression on the ocean floor that typically runs parallel to a tectonic plate boundary. Trenches are formed when two tectonic plates meet at an edge, and one plate moves under the other. This leads to the creation of long, narrow submarine canyons, or in other words, trenches. The Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Japan is the deepest oceanic trench on Earth. It looks like a crescent-shaped dent on the floor of the Pacific Ocean. The Mariana Trench's depth is greater than Mount Everest's height. The deepest point in the trench is called Challenger Deep. It is named after the vessels HMS Challenger and HMS Challenger Two, which managed to explore its depth. The water in the trenches is frigid. The water temperature lies between one to three degrees Celsius or thirty-four to thirty-seven degrees Fahrenheit. The intense water pressure at this depth. Makes this part of the ocean a dangerous place. The water pressure in the trenches is nearly one thousand times higher than the standard sea level atmospheric pressure, and that is why these deep marine trenches are the least explored and the most extreme marine ecosystems. But still, life can be found here. Many organisms that thrive in these high-pressure environments lack gas-filled organs, such as lungs. These organisms are made mostly of water and gelatinous material that cannot be crushed as easily as lungs or bones, such as species of starfish and jellyfish. Comb jellies, hatchetfish, and tube worms are some animals that live in trenches. Due to the lack of sunlight. Photosynthesis cannot happen in trenches, so for animals living there, marine snow is an important source of nutrients. Marine snow is the continual fall of organic material from higher in the water column. Marine snow consists of organic waste such as animal waste and the remains of dead organisms such as seaweed or fish. This marine snow is nutrient rich. And feeds bottom-dwelling animals such as a sea cucumber. Now, my dear listeners, which of the following do you think you will find at the bottom of a sea? 
A. A volcano B. A waterfall or C. A cave Did you say we can find all of that? Then give yourself a pat on the back because you are a smart cookie and unlike many people who think that the bottom of the sea is flat you know that it has mountains and caves and volcanoes and waterfalls in fact the world's largest waterfall is in an ocean located in a slice of ocean between greenland and iceland the gigantic waterfall known as the denmark strait cataract is the world's largest waterfall discovered till now even the largest mountain on earth is partially submerged in the ocean mauna kea located in hawaii is the tallest mountain in the world it is a dormant volcano that rises more than 10000 meters from the floor of the pacific ocean making it taller than mount everest however Over half of Mauna Kea is underwater in the Pacific Ocean. The ocean floor is also home to most of our planet's volcanoes. Scientists believe that 80% of the volcanic eruptions on Earth occur in the ocean, and most of the underwater volcanoes are found along a belt called the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is a horseshoe-shaped region. of intense seismic and volcanic activity that encircles the Pacific Ocean. It is home to over 75% of the world's active volcanoes and over 90% of the world's earthquakes. The ring of fire is caused by the grinding movement of tectonic plates against each other. This grinding movement releases energy in the form of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions due to the vastness depth and harsh conditions of temperature and pressure that exist underwater so far humans have explored not even one third of the ocean exploring the ocean floor is so tricky that the surface of mars has been mapped in much more detail than the ocean floor We still know only about one third of the animals that live in the ocean, and nearly two thousand new species of ocean animals are discovered every year. And that is all from us today. Thank you so much for listening. We love interacting with our listeners, and your emails mean the world to us. So do write to us. You can give us episode suggestions, tell us what you think about our podcast or let us know which episode has been your favorite so far. Our email address is wonderfulworld.kids at gmail.com And please subscribe to our podcast. Our next episode is going to be the final episode of season 3. It will also be the last part of our three part ocean series where we will talk about all the things that are harming our amazing oceans. Life on earth will not survive without oceans. They are our carbon sinks and our oxygen generators. So how can we keep our oceans healthy and thriving? Tune in next time to find out. This was episode number 29 where we spoke about layers of the ocean. Thank you for listening. See you next week. And until then, keep on wondering.